man is uh, Huntley Armstrong and nothing wrong with his uh, feeling in his flat throat. Good stuff. Huntley Armstrong from the ACT. Good representation from the States as uh, Ferguson does the fielding for Australia. And in fact, the only um, state not represented in this uh, particular game is there's no representation from Tasmania. We've got uh, one, two, three, three New South Welshmen. Runs here to uh, Huck. Wayne Holdsworth does the fielding in New South Wales. We've got uh, it's Parker going to Muhammad Nawaz. It's good up straight. And it's an easy single. These two are Put on a very good show here. Actually, they're putting Pakistan right back into a strong position. Yes, my reference there to not having representation from Tasmania is in the 11, but we certainly have one in the 12th, which is Tim Bowers, 12th man for Australia. So we've got all the states represented there. It's uh, Alan Mullally, Mullally, should I say, does the tidying up. Four for 146. This is Mohammed Nawaz on 11. There's Jeff Parker's last ball of his seventh over comes in. Nicely fielded. No, it just in the last moment, tumbled over and got away from his clutching fingers. So a little bit of untidy work there from uh, Wayne Holsworth. And that's the Pakistani score, four for 146. four kids at school so we'll get a hundred dollars cash allowance for our elders Kylie and fifty dollars cash each for Kelly Sarah and Nathan it's all tax-free paid direct to us mums and the first payment starts this May it means five hundred dollars cash to us in the next 12 months tax-free the Unsworth back to school allowance one hundred dollars cash first child fifty dollars all other children Barry Unsworth's guarantee the Unsworth government listening and acting authorized by B Unsworth Sydney for the Australian Labor Party appeal there but it was a uh, frustrated one I'm, I'm afraid let's watch it again leg spin are turning a little far actually it's uh, and could have been pitched slightly outside of leg stump it's half volley and Tucker Run rate 4.17 after 35 overs, so just 15 overs to go. It's Adrian Tucker, most impressed with him. Got a bit of bounce that time. A little bit of zip. He gives it a gives it a flick with his wrist, and that's why he gets a little bit of bounce. And the batsman's played under that one. This 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 one's well up. Let's give this one a bit of loop. It's Armstrong into it. It's time to cut down the two. He does. And there's only one run there. Pakistan really trying to get on with this. That's Mohammed Nawaz. He was on 13. It's interesting to look to see the composition of the uh, representation from the states. The ACT has got one member. Queensland's three, as has New South Wales. Two from Victoria. One from Western Australia, South Australia and Tasmania. As the last ball of that particular over comes in. That's the end of the over. This is Stuart Law does the tidying up. And the ACT representative is uh, Huntley Armstrong. And the three uh, Queenslanders are Joe Scuderi. Darren uh, Playle and uh, Stuart Law. That's the scorecard. The New South Wales representation is covered by uh, Adrian Tucker. 
Brett Williams and also Wayne Holdsworth. And the single West Australian is uh, Alan Mullally as Parker goes in and Parker gets knocked out, but it'll be fielded there by the single South Australian representative, who is Lachlan Ferguson. He has fielded brilliantly today too in that uh, cover position. He's on the on the fence there, but uh, and for whether fielding on the fence or in the covers, he's been fielding brilliantly. So he's uh, done very well for South Australia. Oh, a full toss this time. It's Holdsworth here as Cataluf has got a habit of slipping over and to field the ball, as you can probably see there by his trousers. Here it is, a full toss. Down on the knees again. But makes sure he gets his body behind it, which is good stuff. So this final of the McDonald's Bicentennial Youth World Cup going Australia-wide on Sky Channel as it's got down underneath it goes Alan uh, Mullally and that is the dismissal of Mohammed Nawaz caught by by Alan Mullally off the bowling of Jeff Parker so that's the end of uh, Mohammed Nawaz dismissed for 14 caught in this manner went for it got it oh and it's uh, there it is beautifully caught just right underneath it got his hands in the position eyes in the right position and Mohamed Nawaz is out caught. Malali bowled Parker for 14, and that's Parker's third wicket. So Pakistan, five for 149. You can, you can see, see us on After Dark Tuesday night, night at 9 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> This week on After Dark, it's the Fantas Pet of the Year Awards at the Sydney Boulevard Hotel with your hosts Ray Burgess and Tracy Bennett. Meet the finalists, feel the excitement. The Fantas Pet of the Year Awards, this Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Sulphur car butt, left-hander, the new man. And the last man to fall was Mohammed. Now uh, was he fell in this fashion, hoiking the ball away, just helping it. It's on its way, but it was in the air, and straight down Alan Mullally's throat. That fine leg, Jeff Parker, the bowler. It's a different angle there. He hit it okay, but it was in the air. He paid the penalty, straight down Mullally's throat. So Mohammed now was falling for 14, and now Pakistan five for 149. The left-hander about to face. That's uh, Butt. And uh, welcome back to Gordon Schwartz. Thanks, Ashley. It's the third wicket for Parker, who fell awkwardly earlier in the day, damaged his left hand. Don't know how it'll affect his uh, batting. First delivery to Butt. Out into the covers. Well, he's bowled very well today. He has. Jeff Parker. Zolfa Car Butt. Age 17, there's 52 runs so far in this competition, and his highest score against Australia, 28. So that's pretty significant. Left arm slow bowler, picked up 10 wickets in this competition. Pretty useful uh, double. In fact, Zolfa Car Butt was born on New Year's Day, Lahore, 1971. This delivery, incidentally, will uh, mark the close of the 10 overs by the Australian skipper. Straight down to mid-on. Picked up by Holsworth. Applause from uh, an appreciative crowd, not a big crowd, but uh, an appreciative crowd and the sun shining brightly. Conditions are the best. There they are, 10 overs, three for 36 and a fine spell. He took two wickets in the semi-final against England, so uh, certainly played his part. Yes, he played a lot, bowled a lot better today, Jeff Parker, than he did against England. He uh, a little bit expensive against England. Conceded 49 runs off his 10 in that match. So a lot better performance. Good ball from Adrian Tucker. Right arm leg spinner. His action is uh, pretty much like Bob Holland's. A little bit open. 
gives the ball a fair tweak. Pushes it through. Adrian Tucker, right arm, leg spin. And that was the wrong one. Good delivery. A bit of bounce there. This is it. As the batsman sees his action, a little bit square on. But he certainly does give the ball a genuine tweak. That's a good delivery. Nice looping delivery, spinning from the leg. Fairly economical. His eight overs uh, cost him 24. He's now in his ninth over. They've had to watch him very closely. And he's only a single straight out to Ferguson on the fence. Good wicket. Yeah, he's a bit lucky to get away with that one. It's a long hop. And the batsman hitting it straight along the ground to Ferguson. There's Lachlan Ferguson out at square leg. Now the left-hander, the adjustment to the field placing. And still got the man, uh, Ferguson, uh, now becomes on the, on the cover fence. And uh, the field is pretty much widely spread. Quite a few on the boundary. In fact, a man at mid-off on the boundary, cover on the fence, mid-on on the fence. And there's a nice piece of placement, the ball outside leg stump. I'll look for three here. Holdsworth doing the fielding and a good throw back. It's going to have been suicide to go for three. He's got a good arm and he throws low. It's the ball run in nicely to the um, keeper. It's been a feature of his fielding. Picked it up left hand and uh, fired it in right handed. So it's Tucker. To the left-handed, Zolfikar Butt. Short That's outside. a good shot. He'll go to the fence. Good back cut. That's a beautiful shot. And Adrian Tucker will be disappointed with that delivery. That's the end of his over. So a fairly expensive one for him. His nine overs now have cost 31, and there's the score after 38 overs. Five for 156. It's a very wristy shot on the left-hander, and uh, Scuderi had no chance. Chasing it down towards the southern end of the Adelaide Oval. Adrian Tucker just annoyed with himself there, just down to that last delivery. There's the card. A couple of 35s there. LA High and Nawaz. Both on 35, although well, they were dismissed. Magnificent performance by LL Hay, the skipper. 30, 35 runs off 28 deliveries. It really was a tremendous innings, and uh, the feature of his innings was a six off the bowling of Wayne Holdsworth. And smashed it over point for six, and uh, that's no mean feat. The run rate's still over four. Uh, it's pretty good, but they have lost five wickets. Skadiri to Huck. Huck on 29. He's batted pretty well. There's Wayne Holdsworth. A little bit of sheen. And there is Huck. Well, he got 20 uh, odd uh, against Australia in the um, match in Mildura and 20 odd in the semi final. And certainly Hark's bat has uh, looked as though it's been through the wars. And bandages all over it. The well-known Ishan brand. Well-known, is it? In Pakistan. Seems to have found the middle of his bat. A few occasions, there's Warwick Armstrong. He's not quite as not quite as big as the legendary Warwick Armstrong, is he? Well, the, uh, the team coach, Jack Potter, has nicknamed him Warwick. Joe Scuderi. Certainly not Joe Scuderi. He's a slim build, very wiry. So Warwick Armstrong was a, a giant of a man, and a giant in Australian cricket in more ways than one. And there's Huntley Armstrong. 
Mind you, he's not all that small. This young man can uh, score anywhere near as many runs for Australia in the years to come as Warwick Armstrong did. Well, then he'll be a valuable acquisition at test level. Yes, well, Huntley Armstrong just fielded the ball. That was from the ACT. He scored a magnificent 244 for the ACT against Queensland in the under-19 competition this summer. Plenty of beef into his shots. Oh, a nice wristy shot down to uh, third man. Mullally, that was, on the fence. Down towards the fence. Turned uh, way over the keeper's head. It's Mullally, a tall, lean young man from Western Australia. Let's go. And gave Perry no chance whatsoever. Oh, no, he wasn't very impressed. Don't back up, spread out. And change of footwear. So just a little bit of a delay here was the... Uh, his huck on 30 off 61 deliveries. Not too many uh, spikes there, are there? Bit hard to tell. Zolfika, but seven off seven. Australia got rid of uh, the opener, Amwa, very cheaply for eight. That helped this morning, but uh, the latter batsmen have all scored quite freely, as you can see. Bassett Ali, 23. The skipper. He 35, Nawaz 35, Ark 30 not out, um, Mohammed Nawaz 14, and Butt, who uh, has just come in, is on seven. So they've all um, been on top. All of them got a start except the opener, Anwar. We're now back. We did you resume? Footwear completed, and it's the leg spinner, Tucker, to bowl to Butt. A bit of line, they will have to hurry. There's an appeal. Nice bit of work by the keeper Berry. And umpire Rick Evans. The rules that the batsmen were well home. Let's have a look at that. A little bit of hesitation here. But one of it. He didn't, he did. And a near thing. Good piece of keeping. And uh, boy. Hark had to stretch out there. Well, that's a bad ball. And uh, it went begging. Must have been close for a, uh, a wide there. There's that run out uh, attempt. Batsman well home. Good piece of keeping there by Berry. Miss Field, no run. Stuart Law just fumbled it there. He's the uh, Australian vice captain. A richly talented. Queenslander, 12th man for Queensland on a couple of occasions this summer. Perhaps the best of the Australian young, youngsters. So Adrian Tucker, he's nearing the end of his uh, spell. Mandatory or maximum 10 overs. It's a pretty good delivery. Gives the ball a fair tweak. Many um, South Australians who haven't seen Law bat. I know he made 11 in the semi-final, but looking forward to Law in full flight today. Pretty good spell from uh, Adrian Tucker. 10 overs, conceded 32 runs. Pakistan after 40 overs, 5 for 159. And Adrian Tucker takes his jumper. He won't have a turn at the crease. Again, he's bowled 10, and he's conceded 32, 33 runs. 32 on the board, on the scoreboard, that is. So Huck is on 30, and the man about to face Skadiri is Zolfikar Butt. Left hand up. 
and they've got the uh, run rate down to now just under well, just under four isn't it 159 off uh, 40 overs yes yeah, so the Australians will be uh, hellbound here on uh, keeping things very tight indeed and to, to maintain below four Oh, that must have been fairly close. Give a nod out. They'll look for two. And they'll get a very easy two. They might even come back for three. Mulally, a little bit slow there. And Hark takes the opportunity of coming through for a comfortable three. Very just a little bit uh, annoyed. The ball went down towards the northern... You're going to say the fence. You get used to saying the fence at Adelaide Oval, but of course there's a line across at the northern and the southern end for the boundaries. Quick single to Hark. Well run. Wayne Holds Holdsworth doing the fielding. And, uh, giving the ball extra sheen. Yes, that pre previous delivery must have been pretty close to LBW. Very close indeed. Three leg buys result in. Oh, he's whipped that one away. A beautiful shot. Straight out to mid wicket. Lachlan Ferguson doing the fielding out there. Ferguson has a good arm, a good return by the um, Adelaide University student. Fumbled it, admittedly, but a quick throw back to Berry. But on nine, off 11 balls. Scuderi. Is it chance? Oh, goes begging. That was Lux up. with you. Lux of fortune, isn't it? Mistimed it. It was the forward shovel. Let's have a look at it. A little hoik will do. For one. Another very cramped looking shot there. He's lucky to get away with it. Holdsworth comes around from mid on. Single resulted, but uh, very near thing. Over. And he tried to hit that over the uh, George Giffen stand and missed it completely. Five for 165. So Pakistan, five for 165. Imza Huck on 32. And Zolfakar Butt on nine. You're handling those names very well now. It's a lot easier just Butt and Huck, isn't it? 3.92, they have the run rate. That's, uh, I was going to say, Australia have reduced it to 3.92. Holsworth back into the attack. And immediately smashed away by Huck. Mid-wicket up by Ferguson. Holsworth first bill was from the southern end of the Adelaide Oval, five overs, and he conceded 17 runs. Yes, he generated a fair bit of pace. It's the ball to cut back into the right-hander. It'll be useful against this uh, left-hander but who is really looking to uh, score off every ball. He must keep things pretty tight here, not giving him any room outside off stump. There's a bit of a uh, wild, wild village Yahoo shot. He got away with it. Head in the air and swung. It was a glorious return, too, by Skadiri. He was lucky to get away with that. It was a pretty ordinary looking shot. One run yeah, right result. over the stumps. It's time to huck. It's gone for a big hit. This could go to the boundary. It does. Well, it's a fairly defensive field that he's got, but um, 
The Pakistanis have there's a lot of vacant territory out there and Hark found that one on that occasion, or found some of it on that occasion, beat Ferguson to the fence. Good timing. Well, they're really going for everything now. In the 42nd over, and that uh, easily beat Lachlan Ferguson. It's in the air again. This could be out. In fact, good it catch. is. Good catch by Ferguson. So, Imza Mamamal Puck falls for 37. Caught in the deep by Lachlan Ferguson. A very safe pair of hands and a very good fieldsman. Ferguson, this is how it happened. The leg hoik. He got onto it. He got a fair bit of wood on that. And straight down the throat of Lachlan Ferguson. He got the buckets around it. Magnificent catch. Good safe pair of hands. Huck goes for 37. And it's six for 181. Just the thought of going board really freaks me. It starts to march back and you worry like hell. She's scalp, dandruff, hair loss. I was really frantic until I went to Ashley and Martin. Many Ashley and Martin clients find that baldness never happens because they suffer from conditions that respond to the exclusive Ashley and Martin hair and scalp treatment programs. Can your hair loss be slowed, even stopped? You may never know unless you have an Ashley and Martin consultation that's entirely free of cost to find out how much they can help you. Ashley and Martin really helped me. You batsman, Rafa K. Or Ali, depends. Rafa K. I think he's. Uh, it's interesting. Some of the um, uh, scores that have come or came through during the. Here's that catch again. Well judged by Ferguson. Took it low down. Practically the same delivery, just outside the off stump. He got four from the previous ball. This time, not quite in the same direction. And. Uh, Ferguson said thank you. Good delivery at his toes, right up into the block hole. Oh. Rafa so. K. Ali is off the mark. No, in fact, that was Butt. He picked up uh, a single. The uh, batsman, of course, crossing. Correction. So Rafa K. Butt, uh, Rafa K. Ali is to face his first ball. Right hander. Born in Lahore, April 20, 1971. He's a right-hand opening batsman at home. And a nice little dab down to third man, Stuart Law, in the fielding. So Rifike off the mark, the single. There's his figures. Right-hand batsman, as you see, scored 53 runs. Higher score is uh, 20, or it was 20 against the West Indies. He's the wicket keeper. Only 16. Looks a lot older than that. Catches four, stumpings five as their wicket keeper. It's a current run rate, so uh, a little bit of a boost in the last couple of overs. That is one way. So now 4.35 to 42. So the run charge from now on there could be a few uh, real slogs now. You don't have to go silly looking for singles and that's uh, sensible stuff. Rifike giving Zolfakar butt the strike. And Zolfakar has looked to uh, score off every ball. He's not uh, there just to occupy the crease. Australia have five men around the boundary line, right around the fence, so that they've only got to pick up uh, the odd single here and there, an occasional two and three. And uh, I'll send that run rate up considerably. There's plenty of gaps out there, and uh, it's a matter of um, good placement. Pick up your twos. There's a couple of them that you can see. One down in front of the scoreboard. Come right around past the northern end. They go right down to deep third man. In front of the member stand. And you come right around to, well, almost a point. Another quick single. And then right down on the straight hit. Just in front of our broadcasting point down here. Is um, the vice captain, Stuart Law. 
There he is, just walking across. Yes, he goes from uh, mid on to the mid off from the right hander to mid off left hander. Just moving over in posi pos position now. So it's Butt on strike. He's on 12. And more runs from him. He'll get at least one. They may look for two. Very good fielding and good running. Could have been a near thing had uh, Joe Scuderi taken uh, that return. It was right over the bales. But smashing it away through the covers. The man out in the field in the boundary there, Brett Williams. Good throw in on the bounce. And it could have been a near thing. Oh, there's an educated edge. Good placement. Four runs. Well, that's what they did, Ashley. They got a few singles. They got three of them. Short ones early, quick ones, and then uh, a boundary towards the finish, and up goes the run rate. It's pretty hard to uh, place a field for that uh, particular shot. So Joe Scuderi, a little bit disappointed. This is how it happened. For the slog. Tried to hit it, uh, in fact, past point. His placement was pretty good. He nicked it over slip, and where slip might have been before. Little dab will do you for a single. So this is good stuff. It was a very productive over indeed. The Pakistanis. It's now six for 183. 42 overs gone. It's 10 off that over, Ashley. We were saying now all they've got to do is just dab a few here and there, and all of a sudden. 10. That was uh, very costly from Australia's viewpoint. Yes, it's amazing what, what you can do with singles and twos and the odd boundary. Uh, 10 and over it was just what the uh, doctor ordered, certainly for the Pakistan cause. Well, there were rumours that the top half of Pakistan could bat and the lower half weren't particularly strong, but uh, they might hit, hit freely and hope and uh, send the score up considerably. Holsworth to but well the uh, Rifake Alley who's uh, at the non-strikers end he's a right hand opening batsman back in uh, Lahore and here he is coming in number eight pretty useful to have a fellow who's uh, who's used to batting against pace coming down the order like that wicket keeper as well but it's Zulfikar Butt facing. He's out. Departing. Well, he kept swinging lustily. Perhaps that was a good idea at this stage. Uh, productive. He picked up 19 runs. Very valuable. But eventually fell to Holsworth. I suppose the law of averages. He couldn't get away with hitting across him like that. The ball pitched on leg stump and hit the top of leg stump. So, uh, Zolfakar Butt departs after scoring a pretty handy 19. We see a few shots, or we have seen a few shots like that in the country carnival being played down here in uh, Adelaide, uh, Ashley. So, uh, yes, you're right. They, they bring runs. A few agricultural hoiks in the Correct. country carnival. Correct. That's right. So, that is the seven for the four. Zolfa Car Butt departing. Seven for 183, the scoreboard shows now. And this is a very exciting uh, young cricketer, this fellow. Not so much with the bat, Mushtag Ahmed, although uh, his batting did help uh, Pakistan to beat the West Indies in a tight situation the other day. I'm, I'm uh, re referring more to his bowling. This is the Kadir lookalike. Lookalike yes. in action more the than Abdul anything else. The Abdul Kadir carbon copy, almost. Mushtag Ahmed, he, he really has modelled himself on... Uh, the great uh, Pakistani leg spinner, Abdul Qadir. But, uh, he's no slouch with the bat either, this young man. Very confident indeed. It's Holdsworth. And immediately off the mark, he's hit it straight to mid-off and run. And he's made it. <laughs> Big smile on his face too. Mushtag Ahmed, 17, leading wicket taker for the youth cricket. 17 overs at 14. That's a tremendous effort in, in uh, this uh, li limited overs series, World Cup. 
Averaging 10 with the bat, so uh, pretty handy down the list batter. Higher score of 12 not out against the ICC. Poor old ICC comes in for a few records in this position. Ali, an inside edge, comes down to Skadiri. Ooh, made the keeper stretch. Straight over his head. Picked up by Tucker. We're now into the... Uh, 44th over, it's showing 43rd on the scoreboard. Run rate 4.3, 7 for 185. Holsworth has 2 for 27, he's now in his 7th over and bowling to Ali, the wicketkeeper for Pakistan. Well, they look for two, but uh, Rupa K decided not to go. Mushtaq wanted the strike. That hurt too, hurt the Australian skipper when he took it for the left hand, jarred it again because he jarred when he fell early. And uh, he certainly uh, wrung his hands again on that uh, occasion when he took the throw in. Last ball of this over from Holsworth, who has two for 28. Bowling to Ali. <laughs> straight through and peel. he's out. He's out. Caught behind by Barry, nicely taken. He started to walk. So Pakistan Wayne, loses its eighth wicket. Wayne Holdsworth. Very handy over. Down the leg side. Very well caught indeed by Barry. And uh, really does uh, use his feet very well behind the, behind the stumps. Rifake Alley out for four. Caught Barry, bowled Holdsworth. And Pakistan, eight for 186. Well, Ali is gone. Ashley Mullet and I are going. And incoming, David Hooks and Ian Aitken. Thank you kindly, Gordon. Seven for 186. Ahmed not out on two. Zulufakar Ali. Right hand batsman on his way in, and uh, they're in the 43rd over. Australia will be pretty pleased, uh, I would think, in with this so far. And uh, notice the footwork of the wicketkeeper. Um, I remember Rod Mars telling me that the most important thing a wicketkeeper can think about when the bowler's running in, just moving your feet. And uh, Berry's moved his feet very well there to the left. And... Uh, out very close and given out <laughs> thrown in from Mullally in the deep and going for the second run and so this is Mullally the uh West Australian tall bowler slammed it in, hit the stumps. Good throw, and uh, Darren Berry didn't have to do any work at all there. That was, that was top cricket. Really top cricket as uh, the young man leaves the arena. Mushtaq Amain. Yes, and another blow for Australia, and uh, the number nine comes up on the scoreboard in orange. That means nine wickets. And Australia will be more than pleased, as we mentioned before, about this continuation fall of wickets. And have a look at this. And just watch where this batsman runs. He runs more distance than he, he has to. And we've seen that a couple of times this tournament. Instead of running straight down the pitch, he runs wide to his left. And he's only just out. And one wonders whether, if he'd run straight down the side of the pitch, that he may have uh, snuck in. Yes, I do. 
I'd agree with you because uh, when you're running away from your target, quite obviously, you've got to make a little more distance. But, uh, well, it's in the book now. So at the moment, nine wickets down for 187 and uh, we're in the 44th over. And Pakistan started off uh, quite well, but they've really... Uh, in a very sad and sorry position now in the final. Yes, they lost, they've just lost four for 16. They were at one stage five for 171, they're now nine for 187. And if Australia can keep them under, to under 200, they've done a particularly good job. Even more so when you consider the fact that there may well be some rain about, which will adjust the overs if, they, if it comes this afternoon. So Australia certainly in the box set at the moment and there we see Shaquille Khan's record not a particularly strong record is it That's no he pays for the Habib Bank he's aged just 19 uh, he hasn't been picked for his batting prowess one wouldn't have thought looks like my average against Pakistan in Pakistan a few years ago but a right on fast bowler and quite promising and looks quite competent out there, Ian. It's yes, surprising it. to see that he's only made one run. He's a very long stride to the, towards the pitch of the ball and a very competent forward defence. Perhaps that's all he can do, but... Uh... So their current run rate is 4.2. Just a single uh, wicket left. And there it is again, a repeat performance. I think that's all he can do, actually. That's the end of the over. Devil's number, of course, 187. Just 13 off 100. Remember Les Favell one day getting onto 87 against New South Wales, and Norman O'Neill said to him, you had a look at the scoreboard, Favelli, you're 87. And Favelli said, ah, that doesn't worry me, that sort of stuff. Got out next delivery. Came in second innings, and of course, Norman O'Neill said to him again, you're still on 87 for Veli, and he got out for naught. And he told him, you're still on 87 for Veli. So he got his money's worth on the 87 on that particular game, but there you see Pakistan, a sorry sight, nine for 187, and it just needs Australia to finish its innings off and get away to a sound start in, and they'll be in the box seat. Yes, and uh, that'll make it a double for Australia with the... Uh senior side winning the World Cup so if the the youth can win this uh, McDonald's bicentennial youth World Cup it'd be a great double for Australia and it'll just continue on with the the great season that we've had in 1987 88 and it really has been a wonderful year of cricket for Australia young Wayne uh, Holdsworth at the moment is uh, completing on his way to completing his 10 overs, if it lasts that long, of course. Adrian Tucker in the, the gully there doing the fielding. And Conditions at the moment pretty good in Adelaide. They're quite a good uh, solid blue sky with a bit of uh, fluky cl cloud around as Holdsworth is on his way big uh, Alan Mullally pretty happy with himself they're having a bit of a, a laugh but uh, that's not too bad that skyline there that's looking to the southwest over the stands here at Adelaide Oval. There's a John Creswell stand in the foreground. One that's being demolished and replaced by a super stand. <laughs> Having corporate boxes, seating for 1,820 people. And the stand family is very big here, early in the century, uh, Ian. They've got the John Creswell stand, the George Griffin stand. The Moston Evans stand, a very influential family. They made a good stand, you're saying. 
Allsworth. Runs here, they thought about it, they changed their mind, but it was always on. There's a It's a beautiful ground, of course, Adelaide Oval. And there's Tony Crafter, the umpire from Adelaide. In 1963, went on the boat with Ian Chappell to play league cricket in England. Played for the Port Adelaide Cricket Club here. And uh, probably Australia's most respected umpire now. And uh, at the end of the 45th over, Pakistan a nine for 189. Tony Crafter was a left arm spinner. And he's progressed from the club cricket ranks to the shield cricket as an umpire and of course to the test arena and he umpired, he was Australia's representative in the Senior World Cup tournament just prior to our domestic season here over in India and Pakistan. And they're always quite relaxed on the cricket field. Back to Skidiri. Head rate up with uh, one of the better umpires in the world at the moment, I would think, David, uh, Tony Crafter. Oh, yes. Uh, he, he, along with Dickie Bird from England, would probably be the two best umpires. But I think Mike Gatting even gave him a good umpire's report at one stage. But coming from that famous Port Adelaide Cricket Club, probably more renowned from its football club, but... They produce such great players as Neil Hawke and Eric Freeman, who have the rare distinction of on one Saturday opening the bowling for their club side, Port Adelaide, in a club fixture, and the following Friday opening the bowling for Australia and Brisbane in a test match. That's close. And perhaps going down leg side, Joe Scuderi asking the question. Oh boy, Ricky Evans obviously not that hungry. And have a look at this. Close to the stumps, Joe. Very good delivery action. Oh, and probably going down leg side. In fact, the batsman receiving rightly so the benefit of the doubt. Rick Evans of Western Australian Sheffield Shield umpire. And that's a educated one-day edge through the vacant strips area. Going close to the boundary line and well fielded. And throwing back and just preventing the boundary and allowing the Pakistan totally gone. 191. He's a very enthusiastic fielder as uh, Wayne Holdsworth. Skids down on his knees. He's uh, opening bowler. One of the two Australian opening bowlers. He and uh, Mullally. Scuderi operating from the uh, River Torrens end. So uh, Pakistan at the moment intent on pushing that. Uh, I would think their next target would be to in their mind would be to push it up towards 200. All cricketers and all uh, sportsmen have little goals as they progress along the path of, uh, of glory. Sometimes it's glory, sometimes it's not. But that would be their target there. But that's the end of the over at the moment. Nine for 191 on Sky Channel. On After Dark, Tuesday night at 9 o'clock. <laughs> This week on After Dark, it's the Fantas Pet of the Year Awards at the Sydney Boulevard Hotel with your hosts Ray Burgess and Tracy Bennett. Meet the finalists, feel the excitement. The Fantas Pet of the Year Awards, this Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. The Pakistan scorecard. Malali with three wickets and Jeff Parker, surprisingly, with three wickets. Oldworth. And that's a very good delivery and played very well towards backward point. And Australia in the 48th over. Just some 17 deliveries remaining. And it's very important that Pakistan not only have that goal that Ian Aiken mentioned of 200, but make sure they bat the, two, the 50 overs out. So there's 17 deliveries left. So they can get 15 or 16 runs. Take them over the 210 mark, which at this 
point in time is probably a little bit too far away for them, they believe, but they must bat the 50 overs out. Got a couple of runs there, if they run quickly. Chased by Law. Very accurate throw. Yes, he's a very fine fielder, as uh, Stuart Law. Yesterday against England, uh, I beg your pardon, Friday. Against England, he was uh, involved in a magnificent throw, which uh, ran out one of the English batsmen. Nice flat throw. As in comes Holdsworth. Little uppish. Got it high on the bat. Just two overs remaining at the completion of this particular one. So if uh, Pakistan wants to get up to 200, whilst they have to stop there and play out the entire uh, 50 overs, as David Hooks has uh, told you, if they want to get the extra six runs. It's just a psychological little mark, but everyone helps from here on in. That beats the bat, but I suspect it might have just got a, a front edge. See, that's a very good observation that quite obviously didn't beat the bat if it's hit the edge. Should describe that he didn't get the full face of the bat on the ball. So it was a fine contest between the bowler and the batsman. Worth continuing to put his back and body into it and he's generating a lot of pace and of course these young fellows they've played a lot of cricket in the last couple of weeks and it uh, would be a wonderful experience for them to be consistently playing cricket but it's certainly taken its toll on some of them Brian McFadden uh, contacted glandular fever and uh, Robert Kelly injured a knee and of course Shane George was unfortunate that he wasn't able to take his place he had a, a back problem earlier on or oh, caught and bowled chance uh, went begging there but it was perhaps I'm a bit unfair perhaps it was over the top of uh, of Holdsworth's uh, arm it would have been a tremendous catch if he had have taken it yes he's been uh, probably the pick of the bowlers Holdsworth and bowled the full toss and uh, well over the outstretched right arm of Wayne Holdsworth and he's been pretty impressive, pretty sharp. You can see the Pakistan scorecard, nine for 195. After 48 overs, just 12 deliveries remaining, 12 legal deliveries remaining. And this, of course, a wicket falls. Bridges to Mullally, Parker and Holdsworth. And also Tucker bowled his 10 overs. The leg's going to be just 32. It's a good bowling performance from young Adrian Tucker, the leg spinner. Didn't take a wicket, but an average of 3.2 runs per over is a very fine performance from a leg spinner in one day cricket. Skadiri bowling his 10th uh, over. And he also is uh, yet to take a wicket. None for 36. He'd love to get one up against his name. Most successful bowler is uh, Holdsworth. 3 for 34. Mullally 2 for 53. It's a good over by Joe Scuderi from Queensland. Bowling the ball very full of length. Committing the batsman to play straight. Of course, once you do that, there's only one area they can hit the ball in, and that is straight down the ground. Let's have a look at his uh, run length here, uh, David. To me, he seems to be at the pitch a little too quickly. Yes, he's probably one of the bowlers, Ian, that could probably take an extra few paces in his run-up. Most bowlers, of course, tend to, to run too far, but Joe tends to, to charge in from the start and just feels... It looks as though, as you, you say, he's a little bit flustered at the crease. And so he's charging at full 
pace there. He's not accelerating. And suddenly, oh, I'm by the crease. I've let the ball go. And uh, I've only seen one bowler, truly world-class bowler, be able to do that, and that's Malcolm Marshall. Most bowlers use their run-up. They tend to begin slowly, accelerate to the point of delivery, and the momentum's at their maximum, and they get to the crease line, and they let the ball go, whereas Scuderi is hustling and bustling. Like, right from there, he's flat out, and suddenly he's by the crease. But having said that, he's performed pretty well in this championship. Yes, he certainly has. There's no question of, about that. And he's only a young man, of course, and uh, quite obviously... Someone will get hold of him in the future and perhaps just tidy up that run a little. But if he feels comfortable with it, I guess that's the most important factor. 197. So the last over to be bowled out here and it'll be taken by Wayne Holdsworth so we could see a little bit of action here as uh, Pakistan just that psychological barrier they want three more runs to go up to 200 so let's see if they can get it Holdsworth of course would be intent on making certain that they don't well he certainly gave them a good look at that it's been a fine bowling performance by Australia today to restrict Pakistan at this stage to just 197 but to, to put that into a little bit better perspective you must remember the outfield has been very heavy for most of the innings due to rain so it's probably worth about 210 and that's a good ball the Yorker aims at middle and leg stump and if you could bowl 300 of those in your innings or 50 overs they wouldn't make too many so the score of 210, I think Pakistan would have been looking for a score of about 240, but with just 198 on the board, the sun's shining, and the outfield getting quicker as the day progresses. Australia are in the box seat, given the fact they can get a good start. Yes, that's very important, of course, as uh, Holdsworth comes in. There'll be no run there. Of course, the other thing that's uh, to the advantage, I suppose, of, of Pakistan... David is that at least if there is no more rain the the ball will stop harder for a, for a longer length of time whereas Australia in the early days or in the early commencement of the innings the ball would have got a little bit out of shape and gone a little softer so it wouldn't have helped the, uh, the speedsters no you're right and that's why we didn't see a lot of movement in the air and off the pitch because of the the wet ball and the other thing in Pakistan's favor it doesn't rain and that's a good shot it's wide of the keeper and chased by Law, who will pick it up just a metre or so inside the boundary. And he's got a good arm. In fact, he's got a run out here, I think. That's out. And a very good piece of fielding by Stuart Law once again. He's probably been the outstanding outfielder over the past few days. And uh, he's finished the Pakistan final innings of the championship. And this is the grand final with another brilliant throw. Some 60 metres. It was a good shot. And... Force down. Have a look at this. A very good shot. Just run off the bat through the vacant slip area. Stuart Law came around, picked up cleverly, and have a look at this throw. Right over the bales to Berry. He just says, Thank you very much. And says, On your way, son. And Pakistan got that mental target that Ian A can mention of 200. In fact, they scored 201 after 50 overs or in the, dismissing the last of the 50 overs and uh, that's given Australia something to chase yes and that's a beautiful throw from Stuart Law lovely just where you want it right alongside the wicket and uh, Darren Berry it was tidy there was no doubt about that he applauds uh, the vice captain of Australia and so that's the end of the Pakistan innings uh, finally, all dismissed for 201. You're watching the McDonald's uh, Bicentennial Youth World Cup on Sky Channel as we take a break.
They're racing on Tuesday at the Wick of the Warra, Kembla Grange, and our cameras will be there. Yes, it's the big one, the Rich Brambles Classic for two-year-olds, and Sky Race Day will be hosted by Graham McNeese, live from the track. Be a part of the action, interviews with jockeys, trainers and other racing personalities, together with up-to-the-minute betting information. Live coverage of the Brambles Classic Race Meeting, Tuesday, brought to you by Galgate's Bloodstock Insurance and Hyperion Thoroughbred Syndications. If it's happening in world sports, you'll see it on Sky Sports Center. Sports Center, your eye on world sports, Monday to Friday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern, 3.30 p.m. Western, here on Sky. Oh, good day. You probably know me as Vic Buckley from the Flying Doctors. And I'd like to show you a little footage of the Flying Doctors that you mightn't have had the opportunity of seeing before. Now, these are the original Flying Doctors, the Royal Flying Doctor Service, and they're really something quite unique. And I'll tell you what, if ever there's a story of real Aussie courage and dedication, this is it. For almost 60 years now, they've been battling the outback, bringing help to families, and it's a service we can all be proud of. But right now they need our help, because they've also had to battle a lack of funds, mainly needed to replace their aircraft. In recent years, they've only managed to change over a third of their fleet, and even these replacements were second-hand when they bought them. You know, the Royal Flying Doctor Service do a fantastic job for Australia, so please help them with a donation. You won't just be helping the Flying Doctors. Australian families in every outback location will be grateful for your gift. And welcome back to the Adelaide Oval, where the situation is that Australia requires 202 runs to win this inaugural Youth Cup final. Pakistan, Justice Smith for 201, all out, 10 extras in that total after the 50 overs. Let's run through the batting card for you. Opener Anwar made 8 before he headed back to the dressing rooms. Ali made 23, he faced 51 deliveries, the first of Captain Jeff Parker's victories. Ella High, well, a whirlwind 35 from 28 deliveries, a good skipper's innings there from Za'ur, Ella High. Nawaz made 35 from 58, Holdsworth 37, then uh, Nawaz, Holdsworth 37, Hart made 37, he was caught Ferguson Bowl, Holdsworth, Nawaz 14, and you can see the rest of the card there. With the last play to go, Khan run out by Law for five. The total 201, Australia shooting for 202 for victory. The bowling figures this morning, well, Holdsworth, 3 for 37 from his 10 overs, a good performance from him. Malalay, 2 for 53, Scuderi, no wicket for 38. Jeff Parker, good performance from him as well, he took 3 for 36 from his 10. And Tucker, the last of the Australian bowlers, bowled 10 overs, no wicket for 32. So the equation, as I said, Australia requiring 202 runs to win this inaugural Youth World Cup at the Adelaide Oval. That means they need to score 4.04 runs per over to win the trophy. It's been a pretty wet old morning here at the Adelaide Oval, but the showers have cleared and as I look out, blue sky and white clouds. So hopefully we're in for a good afternoon of rain-free cricket and, uh, as I say, Australia 202 to win. OK, we'll take a break from the Adelaide Oval and when we return, we'll be looking at Casey's Classics. We'll be back with the Australian innings in the World Youth Cup in about 35 minutes time. Bye bye for now.
The sport of kings on the channel of the champs, especially when you take advantage of Sky Channel's race day metropolitan thoroughbred saddle cast coverage. Yes, join Johnny Tapp in Sydney, John Russell in Melbourne and the rest of the national team for the most comprehensive racing coverage in Australia. Whenever there's a starter with a finger on the button, go metropolitan and catch it all right here on Sky. Proudly brought to you by Smith's Biggs. And good afternoon once again from the Adelaide Oval to the final of the McDonald Bicentennial Youth World Cup, where of course Pakistan are taking on the Australians. This morning Australian skipper Jeff Parker won the toss and elected to bowl. We've had a few showers here, but plenty of play has been uh, achieved and of course uh, the Pakistanis batted out their 50 overs for a total of 201. The main contributors there were Zahur Elahai, the captain. He hit a whirlwind 35 from just 28 deliveries. S. Nawaz made 35, Hark 37. They're the three main batsmen in that total of 201. The extras 10, so Australia chasing 202 for victory in the Youth Cup final. Let's take a look at the fall of wickets this morning. Anwar was the first person to go. He was caught in play or bowled Malali. Anwar made just eight runs. Very happy Australian team. First wicket to Mullally, caught by Darren Plale, who's made the trip down from Queensland. And look at that face, happy as Larry. Good on you, Darren. Skipper Zahu Elahai came to the crease at the fall, and Zahu made 35 from 28. Certainly a great innings. He really pushed that score along. Caught Holdsworth, bowled Mullally, 35. Bassett Ali came to the crease. He was uh, LBW to skipper Jeff Parker. Here it is, there. Full toss from Parker. Umpire, no problems about that. Up goes the finger, and Mr. Ali heads back to the pavilion. He made 23 runs. Good. Jeff Parker took three wickets today, in fact. Good captain's innings. Pretty handy with the bat as well. Nawaz, Shahid Nawaz, 35. Court keeper Darren Berry, bowled Parker again. Fall of wicket there, 120. 25. Darren Berry has played pretty well in this final series, taken a few catches and plenty of runouts, but here he was taking the catch. Shahid Nawa off the bowling of skipper Jeff Parker, and Nawa looks to the skies. Why did he hit that? Mohamed Nawa's next batsman in. He made 14 from 22 before he was caught. Bowled Jeff Parker again. Amazing. Jeff Parker, three wickets there, caught Malali. And a sorry sight as he heads back to the pavilion. Jeff Parker steaming in. The onside pull shot. Straight down the throat. Well done. So Hark comes to the crease. Imazamul Hark, 37 from 71. Kurt caught Ferguson, bowled Holdsworth. He made that fall of wicket came at 149. Hark made 37. Lachlan Ferguson. Down on the boundary, great catch. Down on the knees, took it just above the grass. Very happy man. Zolifakar Butt, 19 from 20 deliveries. A good strike rate, but clean bowl by Holdsworth. Those arms go up. A familiar sight for the Australians. They certainly rallied back late in the Pakistani innings. The Pakistanis certainly had their run rate above four for most of, most of their innings, but uh, the stumps went flying in that case as Butt headed back for 19 from 20 deliveries. Ali caught Berry, bowled Holdsworth. Darren Berry moving away. Oh, the arms go up. Another long walk. Ali made just four runs. You see it again now. 
Holdsworth the bowler, Darren Berry the keeper. Good catch. Moving as he took that ball. Ahmed, well here comes a first of two run outs in this innings. Mushtaq Ahmed, two from two, 100% strike rate. But look at this arm of Mullally. Picks it up, one action, smack bang on the stumps. Beautiful throw there. Durham Berry raises the arms to the square leg umpire. Up goes the finger, Tony Crafter. Another run out, Khan this time. Stuart Law was the fieldsman. Another good bit of moving fielding. Stuart runs around, throws it back. And Darren Berry whips off those bales as Khan goes crashing to the turf. Up goes the finger. Let's have a look at that one again. Stuart Law, as I said, the fieldsman. Running round. Picks it up straight to keeper Darren Berry as Khan comes back. Berry whips off the bales as Khan makes a desperate attempt to make his brown. But that was the story. So, as I say, Pakistan 201 from their 50 overs. And uh, Ella High, probably the best batsman, making 35 from 28 deliveries. The bowling figures for Australia, well, Holdsworth and Jeff Parker stood out. They both took three wickets. Mullally, two. Holdsworth grabbed three for 37. Mullally, two for 53. Scuderi, no wicket for 38 from his 10 overs. Parker, three for 36. And Adrian Tucker, no wicket for 32. So the equation has the opening batsman, Brett Williams and Darren Plale, head towards the centre of the Adelaide Oval. To win, the Aussies need 202 runs. They have obviously 10 wickets in hand. The run rate required to make those runs 4.04. So that's the situation here at the Adelaide Oval as play is set to get underway. The Australian innings in this Youth World Cup final. Your commentators, Gordon Schwartz and Barry Jarman. Yes, thank you, Peter. And here's <clears throat> the, Australian, the Australian pair coming out to... Peter. Open the batting. Williams and Plough. That is uh, Williams taking strike. And with 202 runs required to win, 50 overs. So it's it's four four runs per over needed for Australia to win this youth grand final 50 over championship, which has been a marvellous, really has been a marvellous uh, carnival conducted in the in the uh, Riverland and the Sunraiser. And now the grand final here at the Adelaide Oval on the Sunday, which is been an overcast day and a strong southwesterly blowing, but it's Brett Williams to take up the strike and he'll be facing Khan. Shaquille it is. Uh, Shaquille Khan has played the only international in this Pakistani side, senior international that is. He played one international, one one-day international against England and... Uh, dismissed Chris Broad clean bowled him yeah, I find that hard to believe that, uh, that he's the only player in this side because usually you get the Pakistanis uh, 15 years of age break into test cricket second delivery just allows it to go through yes well the two that have come to mind Barry there was Hanif Mohammed and uh, Mushtaq Mohammed both of them were very young when they started their uh, test career at the age of 15 it's hard to imagine <clears throat> young 15-year-old is that may be watching this. Just imagine yourself playing test cricket at the age of 15, and that's what uh, has happened to a couple of Pakistanis in the past. Good figures by Brett Williams, averaging 45 from 363 runs in this uh, carnival. Faces up again. It's a single here, well fielded, just uh, backward of point. Got over it nicely. Damaged his hand by the look of it. Plough to take strike, and uh, there's Plough, Darren Plough's um, figures, 143 runs, 23.8. Got his opportunity when Kelly uh, had to drop out of the original side, but uh, Plough and um, Williams have developed into a good opening pair. Their partnership of 79 was invaluable. That was against England in the semi-final. Well, facing, he's just guided it down to the gully, very well fielded in the gully there. I just uh, I think that's Huck. And there's a sore hand there. 
It is Khan again to Plale, guides into the gully. Huck gets his left hand to it very well to save that single. But I just think it's a shame that the Australians haven't got a green cap, Gordon. That, that disappoints me a little. It's a bit of, bit of short-sightedness on behalf of the Australian Border Control. Similar shot well played by Plale. You might get uh, you might get an argument with um, David Hooks about that. Hooks, uh, David doesn't feel that uh, perhaps they should have it, that uh, that's giving them too close to the top international. Well, I can remember uh, when we went to New Zealand in a sort of a second 11 side with Benno, Harvey, Birds, um, Mekif, uh, Klein, O'Neill, etc. We had a green cap, but on it we had a cross, cross stumps a bit high. That one, there's an appeal there. But that's the end of the over, and it's no wicket for one. the scoreboard. Williams has a single to his name. Plough yet to score. Ali is the uh, opening batsman from the opening bowler from the southern end. Southern or River Torrens end. The clouds banking up again. He comes in to bowl to Brett Williams. <laughs> Swung across him. Watched it carefully. Yes, there was an excited uh Sort of stifled appeal there from Ali, who uh, got a little excited there, but the position that he bowls from, he can't possibly hope for an LBW decision unless the batsman is right back on his stumps. Just let's have a look and see how wide he delivers this from. That's the first ball I've seen him bowl so far. But let's see how wide he bowls from the crease. But it's Brett Williams to face this with one slip there. Yes, very wide. Oh, dear, oh dear. Very, very wide. But he's guided this beautifully down a deep third man. And been very, very well fielded and very well run. Good cricket there from the from both teams. And two takes them on to none for three. Williams on to three. Play all yet to score. This is what Barry Jarman was talking about. Really wide out. Steps. Steps a little bit wide on that last step, doesn't he? So that throw had been just a little bit lower. It could have been uh, touch and go. Oh, badly. A bad misfield. Straight through the legs. There's Anwar. That is most unusual because... Uh, the Pakistanis uh, have been fielded brilliantly during the whole carnival. Let's watch the game. See if he gets down on it. No. He's got the, right down on that. Yeah, the opening batsman. He just allowed that to go straight through. Valuable player for them, not only with the bat, but also with the ball. Lee. Off the toes. Player looking for the... Looking for the gap there, but unable to find it. Not only looking for the gap, but also looking for that first run just to get off the mark. Chasing 201. Came up in 50 overs. Run rate requir required, 4.1. Just on the uh, second over of the Australian innings. Just getting back to that cap situation again, Gordon, you said that David Hooks thinks you've got to earn it, and I go along with that. I think you've got to earn a, a green baggy cap with the with the Australian coat of arms on it. Um, I, I didn't have that in mind, but I had a, a green baggy cap with a kangaroo on it, perhaps, and that's what the boys have got there. They've got a green kangaroo on a yellow cap, which just doesn't look quite right to me. I think they could have been uniform.
think the players might have felt that they were uh, entitled also to a blazer, and I don't think they got those until they came down here for the uh, semi-final. Well, I suppose it's straight in for four there, and this after the second over, chasing 200 and one. But uh, I suppose you could talk for ages on that. But uh, blazers, I I don't think blazers are any good for anything rather than other than wearing inside cricket grounds. I. I certainly am not a great believer in uh, players wearing blazers outside of cricket grounds and, and as far as I was concerned when we played it for Australia, you were not allowed to wear blazers outside of cricket grounds, only inside. So I really can't see any sense in having a blazer anyhow. I think for the opening uh, parade up there in the Riverland, the Australians were the only ones without blazers. I don't know whether that's correct, but that's what I was led well, to believe. I would say it would be a lack of communication then in that, in that case. third over of the innings and the second by Shaquille from the northern or scoreboard end to Williams quick single through mid wicket Plough just a little bit uncertain whether the run was on but uh, and Williams now just puts his hand up as much as to say yes it was on perhaps it was my fault and I didn't call quickly enough Opening partnership, as we mentioned, uh, by this pair against England in the semi final was 79. Both batted well. It's play on strike to Shaquille. Five on the board. Pick up four. He opens his account to square leg straight through the defence. A little bit short. Yes, I didn't think it was all that short, really, but the, the replay will tell us, of course, but uh, I thought that was a very good shot. Yes, you're right, Gordon. Very, very short. And it was put away beautifully for four, and that's players off the mark. As he waited patiently and uh, made the most, and that's the hallmark of a good player, to make the most of loose deliveries. Shaquille pushing into a fairly stiff breeze coming in from the southwest. Clouds banking up. It was uh, a sunny period during the break. There we are looking back over the southwest towards Adelaide, and the city of Adelaide, and uh, yes, it's a fairly dense cloud bank up there, as long as they don't bring any rain. 11 wickets. Shaquille, economical average of 13, is a good shot through the pulley to bring up two Mushtak chasing it the we have uh, dubbed him the Kadir look-alike with his action and he comes into bowl so Barry I'm, I'm sure you'll um, you'll watch him with a lot of interest yes yes he was a great little player of course in the past but that ball did move away slightly and it was a very very good shot uh, Plale, two. It's Mustak. Now it's me. So, so this is the third over. One ball to go in this third over. And 11 runs on the board, so the four runs average is pretty well spot on. There it is. Famous Adelaide scoreboard. A little behind the, the uh, computerised scoreboards these days, but still a great scoreboard. Right. Short, oh, it's hooked, it's in the air, he's under it. No, it's landed in between them. Oh, bounced awkwardly too. Slippery field and short sprigs enabled the fieldsman, the batsman rather, to take two. And that's... That was Ali. A very short sprigs. It's a great shot. Appeared to misjudge it a little bit. Just watch it again. Perhaps he slipped as he started. That's right, he certainly slipped there. Next delivery. Let's go straight down to the same fieldsman. Ali. So a productive over as far as Australia were concerned, taking the score along to 14. It's 
the two opening batsmen having a bit of a chat about the situation and they're already ahead of the of the run rate and it's Australia would be favored at this stage of, uh, of winning this game because there's because they uh, they have the full 50 overs to get this uh, these 200 runs and it's well within their reach of course but cricket is a funny game and only need two or three quick wickets and suddenly the pendulum swings but now it's Ali In the um, semi-final against uh, England, uh, Playal, who's on strike at the moment, made 36. He was the first dismissed. He was run out. And Williams uh, put together a very neat 57. Very solid opener. But like Williams, prepared to uh, punish anything loose. and just angled the bat slightly as it was going past. I think he probably tried to angle that down through the gully area, but I don't really like that shot. A very wide delivery. That's what he's tried to do, but uh, the ball just straightened slightly on him, but a very, very wide angle that uh, Ali comes from, and he can't possibly hope to get an LBW decision from there, as I said before, unless he's well back on his stumps. A little bit dangerous trying to guide it down there when you've got a slip in the gully. Better let that one go. Williams uh, started with five before Playl uh, opened his account. Playl is now nine. Williams is still on five. It's 14. We're in the fourth over. Sulfacar Alley took four wickets. Side, looking for a couple here. It was Anwar, the opening batsman. Just let's have a look at uh, Ali's action here. He goes wide and then he really brushes his right ear with his arm. He goes right over the top. Very, very wide delivery. Stride, but there it is. It's Ali now to Williams. Lovely shot for no runs. To Mushtak. Australians will be looking to uh, this pair for a good start. They lost three wickets in uh, overtaking the England total with Parker and um, Ferguson contributing a solid partnership for the fourth wicket. Quick single. Well run. Takes Williams to six. Playal on ten. No wickets for 16. We'll be back after this break. Two batsmen there discussing the situation. And after four overs, it's none for 16. So it's spot on four overs, averaging four per over. So and we have Williams on six and Playl on 10, who, in actual fact, Playl uh, was not off the mark when Williams was was five. So he's really got on with the, on with the job in the latter part of this short inning so far. At the same time, Pakistan were none for 11. Single coming up here. Ball comes down to Ali. Doesn't have to move far under the fine leg position from bowling at the other end to Shaquille. Shaquille open from the northern or scoreboard end and uh, Ali from the Torrens end or the southern end of the Adelaide Oval. Breeze coming in, quite a stiff one from the southwest, and uh, Shaquille is pushing into it. There's the flag, this gives you some indication of the breeze. Clouds building up a little bit, but uh, hopefully we can get through without uh, 
interruption to Rain or for Rain. Plyle, that strike. Guides it down into the gully. Picked up by Huck. He batted very well. In fact, has uh, batted well in both of the, uh, or his appearances on the Adelaide Oval and batted uh, competently against Australia in the last match of what we call the minor round when Pakistan defeated Australia, inflicted the only defeat so far on the home country. Shaquille again to Playel. And the leg side, quite a bit that one. But, uh, started down the leg side and straightened up a little, but uh, I think Tony Craft is just giving Shaquille the message there. Uh, but uh, that's wider than that and they'll be called. Trying to get a bit of shine on it. And some logos on his trousers there. Australia border control wouldn't be pleased with that. It's a cool. It's been swung nicely, and so it should. He's bowling with that breeze going across. Sulfur car, but that's the fieldsman. There, there it is. It just straightens up nicely. Nice ball, and well fielded. Run for 17. Shaquille. Shaquille Khan from the northern end. Was, gee whiz, that was dropped. really going. I think it was dropped. It's the captain. Oh, yes, got his hands to it, definitely. It's a slow motion. The slow motion camera just really does help because it's hard to tell whether it, yeah, it really really was whether it just hard. lobbed in front of him but uh, it certainly proved it damaged his finger by the look of it has moved out of that position Ella high it's the skipper and battered beautifully too for his 35 runs he's not too happy with that there's a bit of blood there by the look of it oh that swung nicely straightened up nicely big banana ball Good delivery right up into the uh, block hole made it difficult i think he might go off here's the catch again it was dropped Lyle didn't quite get onto it it was, a, it was traveling of course put it down and uh, as we said injured his finger Just looks so he's really having running repairs it looks at a bit of agony there he is yeah, we'll have to get on his trousers there. That's, that's definitely lucky we've got colour television. But I think uh, that's where the old Band-Aid comes in, comes into action. There is Ahur, the captain of Pakistan. Side. Thought he might have had we'll the have magic spray that, with him. No, no magic spray. So like they use uh, the old-fashioned sticking plaster in Pakistan. Don't deaden the pain. <laughs> there it is. That'll do, he says. Let's get on with the game. Australia none for 17. And Pakistan after the same number of overs. Five. Well, one for 17. So there it is. It's a mine ball almost, except for one wicket. And Six. it should have been one down, Australia. Yes, should have been. Sixth over coming up. It's Ali bowling. To Williams. Oh, that's a glorious shot. Four pennies straight into the fence. On the western side. Got his foot across. The ball coming up on the rise, and he played it beautifully. Just forward of point. Well, this is unquestionably the shot of the inning so far. He's hit it on the up. Goodness me, that was uh, a magnificent shot. A little lappishly, of course, but uh, it wasn't a half volley by any means. He's hit it on the up, and there it goes. To the boundary like a rocket. Got it through again, and this will also go to the fence. Yes, just beats both fields. And out through the covers. About uh, 20 yards further around on the first boundary. Successive boundaries to Brett Williams. 
both beautifully timed shots on the offside. He goes to 15, Plough to 10, 25. I said bother it. Wins again. Oh, he's got a stood on the back foot and given this an enormous punch. So that's three fours and three balls. That was really a very, very good shot, a classical shot. He stood on his back foot, stood up high and just crunched it. Don't see that very often these days off the back foot. A square drive, beautiful shot. And so Australia really racing along here at the Adelaide Oval now. And along the carpet too, Barry. It's the beauty of that shot. No danger, really, of uh, being caught. Three magnificent boundaries to the offside by Williams, who races to 19. And the Australian total to 29 without loss. Plyle dropped in the last over when he was 10 and the score was 17. They've strengthened the offside. Frank Williams has hit 12 off the last three balls. And the player was out scoring him quite easily there to that stage. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, he's pushed a single this time. Beautifully run. Naturally, the fieldsmen were on the back foot looking for the big cover drive again. And Williams, Williams was onto this, so he's just sort of pushed this one into the covers and run a, run a single. And it was always going to run a single. They're very, very well played. And good understanding between the opening batsmen. There's a fairly wide stance, uh, as you noticed then, just as he played that shot. Brought the left foot forward nicely and stroked it confidently. Ali again. Ooh. Could be a little bit dangerous. Tried to perhaps glide it down like he tried earlier, just to glide it down between the slip and the gully. Yeah, that's, that is not a good shot. I wouldn't recommend that that shot to any young player it's a dangerous shot it's almost like saying here let's have let's have some practice at catching and slips or behind the wicket it's a it's, it's a half-hearted uh, attempt at a shot which uh, he should be he's going to have a go he might as well have a go but it's the last ball of this over right in the block hole but there's another single there's a there's a dash for the for the strike Miss Mustak fielded that ball brilliantly and almost threw the stumps down. But at this stage, the running between wicket is very, very good, and one would think that they're well behind the clock, but they're not. After six overs, they're 31 without loss, and they need 171 to win. So they're well on target, Gordon. Williams on 20, Plough 10, as you can see there. Williams 20 off 14 deliveries. Great start. Of course, when you hit... Uh, three successive boundaries, it certainly sends the run rate along. They need uh, a run rate of four, just a fraction over four, 4.04. 4. This will be a very keen game because uh, Australia went through undefeated but one game, and that was by Pakistan, of course. So Pakistan believe that they can beat Australia because they did it in the Riverland. Oh, there's some... It was bad fielding. It was butt. But that's the offender. It's over car butt. Let's watch it. Whoops. Oh, that there was, was a bit misunderstanding. Of a... <laughs> yeah. Said no was. Uh, there's a bit of a misunderstanding between the boys there. Very, very straight bat. Here's the equation. Runs required, 170, 43.4 overs left. All wickets in hand, of course, and the run rate required, 3.87. They're up to 5.17 at the moment. Interesting to note that the score was 201. That was Pakistan's score, and in the match in which they defeated Australia, they scored 199, so very similar. Good stuff, Gordon. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, I don't really think that was meant to go there, Barry, uh, was he it? tried to hit it, hit across the ball, hit it through mid-wicket, which there's a big gap there, of course. But he got the outside edge. Anwar. Went to Anwar. So there's two runs there to Williams. He goes on to 22. Just watch this. See? Oh, he's tried to hit it through mid-wicket. Big outside edge. Finished up right on the middle stump. Williams on 22, Plow 12. 34 in the total without loss. Yes, that one got up a little bit higher, up around about the rib, rib cage, and uh, was well played by Williams. His confidence would be high after those three glorious boundaries in the last over. An indication of the field. Fairly strong on the offside there at the moment, close in. No slip, no gully, no slips there, but a, sh a short third man, maybe you'd call that. Okay. On side, there's the field spread out now to try and stem this flow of runs. That's the skipper. So Harilla High. Williams top scored against uh, England on um, Friday with a welcome pile 57. Looked the part, looks it again today. Apart from that last shot, that, that one shot, two balls back when it slid off the outside edge, went down through the gully. Oh, still some misfielding. Misfielding, that's the end of the over. The score is no wicket for 34. If it's happening. EPM Weston here on Sky. Australia now none for 34. Williams on 22. Plyle on 12. None for 34. And a good start by Australia. Very good start. That's Ken Cunningham. The melodious voice of Ken Cunningham has joined the commentary department here, and Gordon Schwartz has departed for the time being. But uh, Ken, a very good game on our hands with Australia's slight upper hand at the moment. Yes, uh, Barry, a very good start uh, by both Williams and Plow, and uh, I like their, their attitude towards uh, towards this game. They're uh, prepared to take this, the quick single, and there's the equation required. 168 runs of 43 overs. The run rate required is 3.9 runs per over, and the current rate 4.85. Very, very good indeed. Huck is the bowler, left arm spinner, pulling around the wicket. Ah! A good living, a good confidence, but uh, appeal and he's out. Australia lose their first wicket at 34, an outside edge, a very good catch, and uh, the spinner's got the breakthrough rowdy. Ashley Mallet joins me now. Yes, KD, and not a bad uh, delivery from Simmons Animal. Ah! And getting the outside edge, and Darren Playl departs. 12 at what a very good start by the Australians a run rate of near five and there's the uh, the handshake or hand pat play all going for 12 off 25 deliveries Port alley gold in the Zamamal up one for 34. Good time. 
Stuart Law is the incoming batsman. He's the vice captain of the Queens of the Australian side, should I say, from Queensland. He's a very good young uh, player. This is how Emma Zamable Huck got the wicket. Yeah. Outside edge through to Ali. And the umpire, no hesitation in raising the index finger. And Huck strikes. Very good catch by the keeper. Ali. Thick outside edge. I heard the noise from here, as a matter of fact, and a very good catch. Got very good hearing, KG. But that was a good catch. Stuart Law, of course, has been fourth man for Queensland. A number of occasions. Oh, that ball. The first class scene. He's probably the best of the, uh, the young Australians, Stuart Law. 308 runs in this competition, averaging 51.3. That's a top effort. 19 years of age. He's a brilliant young prospect. Test player in the making. Because he's got a long way to go, of course. But, uh, it's not a bad start. Huck, wide at the crease. Tucked away. So, uh, Stuart Law off the mark. Yes, it was a good catch by the keeper. There he is, Rafake Alley. Five catches, five stumpings, and KG, uh, we've got a man in this lineup, Mushtaq Ahmed, who is very similar to uh, Abdul Qadir. Well, in fact, he's coached by Abdul Qadir, but that's why he, he bowls very similar to Abdul Qadir, because uh, Abdul Qadir is his coach. That doesn't mean he has to copy him. Well, I would think that... He uh, doesn't have to copy his action, though, does he? <laughs> well, we, when you look at uh, Abdul Qadir's action, Rowdy, yeah, I, I think he's, uh, he's absolutely fantastic fantastic to watch he fascinates me and of course he'd have to be the, the best leg spinner in the world today there's not a lot of leg spinners on the first class stage but uh, yes he is easily the best leg spinner in the world today a wicket one for 36 Australia need 166 runs to win so after eight overs Australia doing it pretty well Darren Playle the man out Caught at the wicket by Ali. Oh. Here's a man in more Huck. 4-12. The wicket falling at 34. So Shaquille Khan to continue from the scoreboard end. And he's a pretty useful performer. This fellow, it's all... Slim frame, but uh, pretty wiry. And bowls fairly sharp. Medium paces. Got a very nice approach to the wicket, this young man. Isn't uh, is Wayne Phillips with his family? Typical family man, Flipper. Devoted father. And uh, whenever he gets a spare moment, he always spends it with his family. Courtney and Abby, his two children. Janine, his lovely wife there. And Flipper, ever the family man. A racing driver fan, obviously, with the Grand Prix jumper. Mind you, talking about driving, he drove a few yesterday in the McDonald's Cup final, semi final, along with David Hooks, and really carted the uh, Tasmanian attack. Smashed them all over the park with South Australia getting into the McDonald's Cup final once again. The man on your screen at the moment is Shaquille Khan. Doesn't really get enough from his uh, his delivery stride, Rowdy. Good approach, lovely there, but doesn't really bend the back to uh, the point of delivery. He sort of uh, doesn't get back on the back leg and arch the back. And I think if he could do that, he'd, he'd obviously get a lot more pace. He probably delivery. would too if he had his left uh, arm up high. He might as well have that in his pocket. It's that low. Let's have a look at him. As the batsman would see him come in. In fact, it'd be uh, here it is. A nice, easy approach. Have a look at that left arm. I suggest he might as well put it in his pocket. Yes, you're right, Rowdy. That's uh, as we see a nice, easy approach here. Very well balanced. Lovely 
rhythmic approach. But this is where he loses it, I feel. Gets into that long stride here. Doesn't arch the back. Just virtually gets it from all his arm there. Doesn't raise his, his left arm high at all. Doesn't get back onto that right foot at all at point of delivery. And therefore doesn't generate the pace that he, that he, that he might if he was to use more of the body at the point of delivery. Good approach here, though. He's a bit front on as well, overstepping the mark that time. So one more run to the Australian cause, umpire Tony Crafter. Singling the no ball. Randy, what a marvellous opportunity for these young uh, cricketers from all over the world, Pakistan, India, the West Indies, to take part in, in such a championship and to be playing the final here under such great conditions at the Adelaide Oval. You just think, KG, if uh, this op opportunity existed just after the war for you and your young man. <laughs> what do you mean after the war? Excuse me, if you don't mind. Which war? <laughs> As David Hooks just said, the Boer War. Yes, but it is a marvellous opportunity for these young fellows. And, uh, I'm sure they realise what sort of opp opportunity. There's Mushtag. The Abdul Katir look alike. He even looks like him on the ground, doesn't he? Even the way he walks. Yes, he's very confident too with the bat. And with the ball. That's the end of Shaquille's over. Just the one run from it. One for 37. Williams on 22. And Stuart Law on one. The Australian batting card. Shows Pale the man out. Caught Rifake Alley. Bold. You know, Zamable Huck for 12. Williams 22. Law 1. Good start by Australia. Very good start, Rowdy. Uh, but to, to lose that wicket of, uh, of Pale has perhaps uh, put a, a curb on the run rate. As we see Huck again. <laughs> oh, wide call by umpire Evans. Yes, yeah, good decision too. Very well wide of off stump. So Pakistan, one for 35. Uh, very much line ball at this stage of the game. Australia a couple of, couple of runs on. But uh, oh. Arc bowls very wide of the crease and a good shot by Stuart Law. And stamp a class about this young man. Australian batsman, there's uh, oh, Lachlan Ferguson, next man in, and uh, he's a very competent young player. Fielded brilliantly today. Jeff Parker, Huntley Armstrong, they call him Warwick. Oh, well, Joe Scuderi, useful all rounder. Adrian Tucker, it's a Huntley Armstrong, uh, a big lad, not quite as big as Warwick Armstrong. You would have played against Warwick, KG. <laughs> You're a good test today, Rowdy, you really are. See Williams waiting for Hark, good delivery, and uh, but now there's the stance of young Williams. Uh, a bit unusual, Rowdy. His, uh, his feet are a long way apart. As you see him go down now. And and that, the hands are apart a bit there, too, on the bat. Bad boy. Doesn't, uh, doesn't seem to be a, totally a bottom hand player. He can play his drives. And also stands with the. With the uh, the, the bat with the open face a bit too, I notice, as we see him down again. You can see that bottom hand around a bit there. And the, see that bat's a little bit open. And look at those hands. Fairly wide apart. Oh. Still, I've seen players who have succeeded in the first class uh, game with their hands wide apart on the bat. One of them, fellow commentator Ken Cunningham. Australia one for 40, needing 162 to win. And uh, uh, good shot, man. These, these are the West Indies. They love playing cricket, whether it's on the beach and the mounds and anywhere. They'll play cricket wherever they can get a game. <laughs> Actually, the bowler's got a fair target there. <laughs> oh, a 44 gallon drum. He's caught it himself. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of Big West Hall. I <laughs> love their cricket, don't they? He's hating it. Look at that. No smile. Ooh. That's a good shot. That's four. That was a lovely shot by Law then. Richie hitting the ball on the rise and timing it superbly, placing it uh, 
very well indeed, and uh, that was a, a very confident shot. Struck that ball beautifully. See it in replay here. On the rise, just falling away fractionally, but place it superbly. It was in the ground, on the air, or in the air, should I say, for a portion of the way, but uh, he placed it beautifully. Lovely, lovely timed shot. He's richly talented, this young man, Stuart Law. And that's one of the reasons. I think that's four of the reasons why he, we say that. Shaquille to Law. Oh, that's good delivery. He moved away. That was a magnificent delivery. Yes, it Lured was. him forward, beat the outside edge. Yes, it was a good delivery, Rowdy. That did move, as a matter of fact, both in the air and, uh, in fact, uh, off the seam. And uh, Law was committed, as we see here. He curves late in the air, then goes also with the seam. A very good delivery on that occasion by Khan. Certainly too good for Law on that occasion. So honours pretty even so far in this over. One for 44 Australia. These West Indies guys, they never out of the game. They've just uh, smashed their tennis ball onto the playing arena. Not only the West Indians. Shaquille to Law. Another good delivery. It's a nice defensive work by Law. Bat and pad very close together. Very compact player. Very quick to pick up whether it's uh, should go back or forward. Stuart Law, five or fourteen balls. He, he got eleven the other day in the first semi-final against England. Second semi-final against England before he was brilliantly run out. Shaquille, yep. more runs. Nice bit of footwork there. Can't prevent the run. So Australia now on 45. And KG, there's no doubt about it, the fielding has been absolutely top class. Yes, it has, Reddy. I've been I've been very impressed with the uh, with, with this young wicketkeeper, Ali. Um, his footwork and uh, his uh, enthusiasm behind the stumps has impressed me. Well, Darren uh, Berry for Australia also kept extremely well. Gee, he he looks a great prospect. Over. That's the Shaquille over. One for 45. Just the thought of going board really freaks me. It starts to march back and you worry like hell. She's scalp, dandruff, hair loss. I was really frantic until I went to Ashley Martin. Many Ashley and Martin clients find that baldness never happens because they suffer from conditions that respond to the exclusive Ashley and Martin hair and scalp treatment programs. Can your hair loss be slowed, even stopped? You may never know unless you have an Ashley and Martin consultation that's entirely free of cost to find out how much they can help you. Ashley and Martin really helped me. Wayne Phillips. So Wayne Phillips, uh, armchair critic today, yesterday. Oh, just signing the leisurely autograph or two. Yesterday, batting very well in tandem with David Hooks to help South Australia get into yet another McDonald's Cup grand final. In Mazamamal Huck. Bowling left arm around the wicket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the keeper saying field it. We, can you interpret what he said? No, I gather that what he was saying, uh, Raddy. <laughs> you feel that one? I'll be very interested to see this Ahmed, young man Ahmed bowl. Oh. <laughs> I'm getting a little bit excited, keeper and bowler. It's pretty wide outside off stump. And they hit right over the top of it. We'll be disappointed that you didn't get that one away. And got that one away. Looks like they'll get at least two. And that's all they'll get. Good throw. 
That was Butt firing it back in the outfield. Sold for car Butt. The end of another imazamable huck over. It's one for 47. I must confess, Raddy, I'm very impressed with the way you handle these long Christian names. It's, uh, you do it so well. I'm not sure whether they're Christian names, uh, hailing from Pakistan, but uh, first names, yes. Bale out for 12. Williams, 24. Stuart Law on five. And the West Indies doing their stuff. Haven't even, take the, haven't even warmed to their task yet. Haven't even taken the coats off. One for 47. And the West Indians enjoying themselves in the outer. Bowling up against the 44-gallon drum. Perfect backward defence. Ken Cunningham, Nashley Mallet, uh, taken off the River End, replaced by David Hooks and Ian Aiken. Thanks, Ashley. There's the all important equation for Australia. And an important line, that uh, third line in the equation. Wickets in hand, nine. The run rate doesn't really matter at this stage, they're going along pretty comfortably. And that's what Australia need to do. And Pakistan have got two options. They need nine wickets or they need to restrict the amount of runs that Australia can score. And a short ball outside off stump. And it uh, was hit with the end result of what it deserved. As they were saying, Pakistan, a boundary four. And Australian players just starting to get on top of the attack. Well, it's a bit of a happy birthday ball there from uh, Shahid Anwar. All the way down to the boundary. Probably not a bad time in Aiken for Pakistan to bring on the leg spin. Uh, I would have felt that while they're a little bit behind the eight ball, they've got to take their risk, and they may as well take the risk now as as later. It's one for 51, and the run rate. Up. Oh, that's in the air, but it's okay. A little bit of luck. Luck fa a fortune favours the fortune. We've praised the fielding over the last few days, but I wouldn't praise too much about that. It was a poor attempt to at the left-hand side. What a good delivery. That went away from the batsman, and uh, have a look at that. Oh, I'll get it. It's a good lapse in concentration there as uh, Shahid Anwar. This time it's uh, OK. Pakistan were dismissed for 201. And this left a run rate of virtually four per over. Yep. Straight down the ground. Beautiful shot from Stuart Law. It'll just go up towards the boundary now, and it is over the boundary. Delightful shot from Law. Ball of full length and Law just punches back past yep. mid on. And a beautifully timed shot on this heavy outfield due to the yesterday rain and the rain overnight. And patches of it this morning as well. So to hit a boundary to the longest boundary in world cricket, it's no mean feat. Stuart Law, he's a very tidy batsman from Queensland. wide according to umpire crafter one day cricket of course and the uh, interesting bowling action here by Anwar something wrong with his left foot he splays his left leg out towards cover 
And that doesn't uh, or isn't very conducive for bowling accurately. I think we'll see a lot of balls from Amar go down offside and a few go down leg side as well. Like that. Very lucky to get away with that. So at the end of the 13th over, Australia moving on quite comfortably at one for 60 and needing just 142 to grab the McDonald's Bicentennial Youth Cup to match the Australian senior team's victory in the World Cup earlier pre-season. That's the Pakistan card. Anwar, who was just bowling on that occasion, was dismissed for eight. Basit Ali, the other opening batsman for 23. Captain of Pakistan, Ella Hai, for 35. And Nawaz for, also for 35. Huck for 37. Muhammad Nawaz for 14. Back with the action. There's Huck. Miles away from the southern end. And uh, Ali for four. And the rest not a much. Not much. Go, go. This is the little leg spin bowler just feeling the ball there. Mushtaq Ahmed. And uh, wouldn't be too long, I wouldn't think, before he'd be on. That's a comparison. Pakistan one for 59, Australia one for 60. So there's nothing in it at the moment shot beautiful shot there from Stuart law that'll go all the way down to the boundary unless the fieldsman gets to it which he has very good shot uh, going very wide of the crease and that shot by law what we call inside out hitting from leg to off and uh, might have been dropped there, I think. Probably bounced into the ground, I would think, in front of the keeper. Just watch the transference of weight here of Law. Falling away from the ball, you see that? Instead of going over the top of the ball and rolling the wrists. Same problem again there. Law not hitting his cut shots, basically because he's not transferring his weight correctly. You're going to play the cut shot, you must point your back foot in the direction you wish the ball to go and lean over the top of the ball. Short ball, dispatched towards the square leg boundary. There's a man at mid wicket, a sweeper. That's Khan. He throws the ball back to Ali. And at the end of the 14th over, Australia chasing 201, a 1 for 63. Bowling change that uh, David Hooks was suggested wouldn't take too much longer to make has been made. And Mushtaq Ahmed, the leg spin bowler, will operate from the uh, northern end here at the Adelaide Oval. Conditions overcast, the breeze coming from the southwest, so he'll just uh, bowl into it and get a little bit of drift. So just warming up the fingers. It just takes four or five paces. And have a look at his action. It's a very unusual one. What's happening now is uh, trying to put his two men in catching positions. It's, this is only the 15th over. He needs, by law, to have two men in catching positions. And uh, that's six. Yeah, great shot. Very poor ball to win your spell with. And I'll tell you what that's done. That's put a lot of pressure back on him now. You run up and bowl your first ball as a warm-up ball. And once you get hit out of the park, it doesn't do your confidence all that well to good when you realise that you've got uh, some 59 deliveries to go. A bit of damage to your bowling stats. 
That's right, you've got five more on this over. It was a bit of a happy birthday. You beauty, here we go. Let's see what the next one is. And he comes again. That's better. And you'll see the two close in fieldsmen that he must have until the end of the 15th though. There's a man at slip and a man at short cover. I'm sure he'd rather those men out somewhere else, but he can't until the completion of the 15th over. Oh. Will Bolden's in a big shout there. Dead ball signaled there by umpire Tony Crafter. That means that no shot was offered. And the umpire signals dead ball. So here he comes. Very much like Abdul Qadir. Over the top. Must have been a wrong and old, I think. And the batsman let it go. And yes, he's appealing for the LBW. Six more. That's a big hit. That's a great catch, too. <laughs> That's a real big hit. He's tapping his own catch, I think. Uh, <laughs> Have a look at this. Short down uh, pitching the leg and going straight on, and uh, that's been pulled a long way out of the park. Sunday cricket, first bounce one hand. Yeah, that's out of the line. Oh. Oh. Well, as we mentioned, uh, a little bit of pressure's going on these players now, and they're just starting to falter the Pakistanis. Yes, he's uh, after that. Just have a look at this. Down, but not far enough. Two hands, young fella. It's four more. So there's a man out there. And uh, it's the end of the over. So Anwar's first over cost him 14 runs. And he is the leading wicket taker for the World Youth Cup. So you can see how much the straight are on top. They've just hit the leading wicket taken for 13 off his over. And they moved along to 79 after 15 overs. And my word, that is an outstanding start. In. This certainly is. Williams is on 40. That's the man on screen at the moment. Stuart Law down the other end on 23. Just 123 runs required for Australia in their pursuit of overhauling 201. So now we've got uh, Imzama Mulhak. Tall left-hander. his way now. Fielded by Ali. Get on. Punched pretty firmly. And a desperate gallant save. You wouldn't have seen that in the olden days. Green on the his trousers. Off 36 balls, Brett Williams has thumped 41 runs and 12 of them came in that last over when he thumped Mushtaq Ahmed over the boundary. This is Stuart Law. 23 off 36. Hales from Queensland. Yes, and he's played most of the games this year for the Queensland Sheffield Shield side as 12th man. It's a very strong side, of course, with Border and Botham and Ritchie, Kerr, Barsby, Trimble. That's in the air, but falling safe past Khan at backward square leg. And just to get two runs. So Law attempting just to guide the ball on the sweep shot. Very dangerous ploy. And the ball just standing a bit shorter than what he thought. And bouncing. Just getting the top edge. Falling safely wide of Khan's left hand. 
And there's the impressive Australian scorecard. 16 overs. One for 82. Williams is 41. Playle out for 12. Laura is 25. And poor young Mushtaq Ahmed has been sent to the outskirts of Adelaide Oval, yes, I think. Siberia. Yes, that was a... That won't have uh, helped his confidence too much at all, but I suppose it's uh, pretty risky, but it seems a bit rough to me that the uh, the captain, Elahai, Zahur Elahai for Pakistan, has uh, taken uh, Mushtaq Ahmed off. Perhaps they may uh, swing him round and bowl him. reflect and think a little bit about the uh, two booming sixes that were thrust off him. It's the nature of one day cricket and leg spinners. They are a little bit of a luxury unless they bowl particularly well. And I know that Kadir has bowled very well in one day cricket, especially against the West Indies, but that's where he is, out there with all his mates. Well ball, but... Zulfikar Butt. And this, there he is, thinking about his bowling performance. And he's been replaced by a man with a name that his captain would like to kick him in, I think. But bowling in the northern end. And a name that's a little difficult to pronounce, Zulfikar Butt. That's the end of another Pakistan over. That completes the 17th over. And Australia are 1 for 83. Just 123 runs required. And Williams is on 42. Brett Williams and Stuart Law is on 25. Just the one wicket to fall. Darren Plale was uh, caught by the wicket keeper when he was on 12. The score was 34 at that particular stage. So, so they've gone along very well. Sweep shot once again in the air, but produced the desired result as far as Australia is concerned. And four runs to begin, Huck's over. And Williams has moved along pretty comfortably to 46. Wide down leg side. And punched very firmly towards the backward square leg boundary. It's very nice if your required run rate is under four and over. And you've got nine wickets in hand, and the first ball you receive from over goes for four, so you're already in front of the run rate. You've got five balls to go. And it really puts pressure on the bowling side. And uh, welcome to the ABC viewers, live from the Adelaide Oval, and the uh, situation here in the final of the McDonald's Youth Cup, Pakistan versus Australia. Australia currently is one for 88, as an attempted run out was there. The not out batsman for Australia is Williams, Brett Williams on 47, Stuart Law on 25, Pakistan on scored 201. And uh, this is the card for Pakistan. Some uh, major scorers coming there from Elahai for 35. Yep. But at the moment, it's the Australian batsman Stuart uh, Law in full flight. And these two have really taken the score along 
very, very well. A little bit of sloppy fielding has uh, developed in the Pakistani in the last uh, two or three uh, overs. Just going back to that uh, Pakistan card, Nawaz for 35, Huck for 37, and uh, Butt for 19. So they were all out for 201. And at this stage of the game, it seems as though it's not enough. As the Australian, uh, the Australian bowling card in Pakistan's first innings, or their only innings, of course, in this one-day encounter. Holdsworth, Wayne Holdsworth, the uh, most successful with three for 37. <laughs> it's back to those uh, bowling figures. Mullally, three, two for 53. Scuderi, none for 38. Parker, Jeff Parker, the Australian captain, 3 for 36. And the little leg spinner, Tucker, none for 32. So that's the fall of the wickets as well. All out for 201. Here at the Adelaide Oval. In this, the final. And David Hooks, Australia well placed. Certainly are in. It's been a wonderfully disciplined display by the Australian players here today. They bowled very well. And they have batted particularly well at this stage. Just 18 overs gone. 93 runs have been scored by the Australians. And they've been the best side, with, along with Pakistan, in the tournament. And both sides are in the grand final here. And there's the Australian batting card. A strong lineup. Williams, 48. Play all out for 12. And Law for 28. With some good batting to come, Ferguson. The captain Parker, Humphrey Armstrong, Joe Scuderi, and that's the Australian batting lineup as we cross down to Peter Overton on the oval. Thank you very much, David Hooks and Ian Aitken. With me, Khan Mohammed, the manager of the under-19 Pakistan team, himself a former Test bowler for his country. Khan, it must be a marvellous experience bringing a bunch of young fellows from Pakistan to Australia. Certainly, they are young boys, and they are going to have some more experience. We managed to. Uh, come and uh, reach to the, the final is good for us and good for the young boys who are experiencing and uh, they have certainly enjoyed this trip uh, particularly in the uh, countryside when the wickets were so good and we managed to play very well and uh, the people were very hospitable and this exposure to cricket uh, uh, by the Australian Board of Control, and it's a good, good, good um, example for other people to take up. Do you look forward to more World Youth Cups? Certainly, we will. Uh, we are looking forward to it. I'm going to suggest to my board that they should also make a certain arrangement to repeat this thing. And if everybody is going to take part in this, I think this is a wonderful idea, particularly when the young players uh, under 19 they are next to be uh, the test uh, players and it's a wonderful experience for them well, we can coach them but we can't give them the experience as you can see we'll have to I leave it there believe, I always believe <laughs> matches are never lost unless it is won that's right and, uh, we'll have to leave it there as the, the cricket continues we thank Khan Mohammed for joining us on Sky Channel and the ABC thank you very much thank you very much to uh, Peter Everton and to Khan Mohammed and the umpires waiting there for the Pakistani team manager to get off the ground. And there you saw the equation. Australia pretty comfortably placed. That main line, the middle one, hasn't changed for a long time. Nine wickets in hand. And uh, the current run rate well above that of the required run rate. It's just a matter now of the Australians keeping their heads. Playing sensible cricket. And they should achieve the target. And what should be going through the batsmen's minds at the moment, the main thought is that either or both of these players must be there at the end. And if they can keep talking to each other, keep encouraging each other to think positively like that, and there's no reason why Australia can't win this with just one wicket down. And that's got to be the thought of that man there, Stuart Law. Arguably the best player on the Australian side. And if he's 
batting partner Brett Williams. And if both those players keep thinking like that, that I'm going to be here at the end, we're going to be here at the end, then that's the way you achieve comfortable victories in chasing targets. And it's very good batting by Williams. In fact, that brings up his 50. Half century in the grand final on any level of cricket is very good, but in a, a McDonald's Bicentennial Youth Championship, even more impressive. Just 47 balls. Yes, it's certainly at a darn good rate. He's in front of, in front of the clock there as the uh, Stuart Law gets more runs, and they're coming reasonably easily at the moment. And I uh, just sense a little bit at the moment, David, that the, the Pakistan's morale is a little low. Yes, I think you're probably right there. And perhaps a trait in Pakistani cricket teams that under pressure they st begin to falter and the Australian batsmen have put them under pressure. The Australian bowlers initially put them under pressure but the batsmen are just <coughs> continuing on with the job. So Pale, just the, uh, the only batsman out. Rifikat Ali was the catcher. And there's the comparison with Australia well and truly in control after the 19 overs. Australia won for 97. Pakistan, who got 201, were 3 for 88 at that point in time after 19 overs. And Williams, 50 off 47 and Law, 30 off 46. So he's been very aggressive as Brett Williams and has batted very well.